Hello and welcome to the Retro Core Show and another Made in China. And today we're going to be taking a look at this. Oh yeah, this is the Game Box. Now this is something we took a look at when they were brand new about a year ago, but now they're meant to be much more improved. So let's dive in and see how good these things actually are in this day and age. One year on from when they first came out. Okay, so first upon opening the box, you'll notice that we've got a bag of tools. Oh yes. Now this may seem a little bit strange, but there is a reason for this. So you get a screwdriver in here. And we've got some extra buttons. And an HDMI cable, quite a long HDMI cable at that. Okay, we also have a VGA cable. We have a small instruction manual in English on one side. And on the other side, it's in Chinese, I presume. Yes, it's in Chinese, okay. And what else do we have? We also have the power pack. Power brick there, feels a little bit light to be honest. And a beefy lead. And it's nice to see it's actually got an earth connector on the lead, so that's a good thing. Now when these things that first came out, that they were only a one player only. But as you can see, this one has two nubs on it, which means, it's two player and just look at the size of that thing. It's massive. Oh yes. Reasonable, reasonable joysticks. They're probably not Sanwa or whatever or Semitsu, but um, they feel good enough. And micro switched buttons as well. Yeah, they feel okay. All right, let's get this thing out of the box. And man, this weighs quite a lot. Right. Wow. This is one substantial bit of kit. It is quite heavy. Wow, just out of an estimate, I'd say that is about 10 kilograms. I mean, holding it with just one hand is not that easy. That is pretty heavy. All right, okay. So let's get a little bit closer and take a look around the back of this thing. So looking around the back of the machine, you can see we've got quite a few different ports on it. Starting off with the power switch, then we've got the DC input, the HDMI out, the RGB out or VGA out, a headphone speaker jack, so you can connect a pair of headphones or a pair of uh, external speakers to it. We've also got a volume control for that headphone jack, we've got a reset switch and two USB ports. Now these USB ports are pretty cool. What this means is you can connect this thing up to a PC and use it as an arcade joystick on a PC and quite possibly a PlayStation 4 as well. So the construction of the stick is really solid. As you can see it's made out of metal, the whole thing is metal and you've got these big rubber stoppers here which will stop it sliding around if you've got it on a you know a glossy table or whatever and if we pan across to the center of the machine hopefully you can see them on this video We've got a speaker grill here, so it actually does have a built-in mono speaker and also some air vents for the CPU inside. It's definitely a well-constructed bit of kit. So the top of the machine is not made of metal, it's made of some sort of thick acrylic. It's a bit warmer to the touch than the sides and the base, so it's definitely not metal, but it is very sturdy, there's uh, no flex in that. Each side, player one and player two, it's an eight-way joystick, six individual buttons, a player button or player start button, and a credit button. And as you can see on player two side, it's exactly the same setup. Now I know what you're all wanting to see is what's inside this thing. So let's open it up and find out. Now it's fairly easy to get into the machine. All you have to do is unscrew four screws which are on the front of the casing like that and it should just tip up because it's on a hinge at the back yep yeah, that's uh it's coming up seems to be uh, stuck on something over there hmm. and it should lift up nope i think there might be some screws on the back of it let's take a look Ah, uh, yes there are. All right. Screw here and there's one on the other side. Looks like we've got to take these out as well. 
Okay, now that they're taken out, this should open straight up. Oh, man, it's a heavy box. All right, let's get it open. Yes, it does. All right, and there you have it. That is the inside of it. As you can see, there is the actual built-in speaker. Of course, once you connect the HDMI, that should automatically cut off. And there is the main board there. And as you can see, there is an SD card right there. So that's gonna contain all the ROMs. So what type of hardware is in here? Well, I'm gonna put the specs on the screen right now. All right, so if you didn't see those, go back and pause the video. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect this thing up to the TV and see how it plays. Hopefully it should be a lot better than the old machines. Okay, so upon booting on the machine, you can see we get this lovely menu screen right here. And we can see that it's running Pandora's box nine. Now the video output is 720p and this is running on a 4K screen at the moment. And it looks really nice, it looks really sharp. So as you can see, we're on page one of 166, which means in total, this has 1,660 arcade games on it. That's a lot. Now, before I mentioned that there was a reset button on the back, well, actually, pressing that button on the back will take us into the settings. Here we can do the custom button mapping and the system config. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we can uh, change how we exit games. Currently, it's a start and coin together. We've got a pause menu. Auto exit after three minutes. So if you don't touch the controls, you you know, automatically reset within three minutes. Select the game mode with coins. So you've got to put a coin in to select the game. Otherwise, it'll just do a normal demo loop. Okay, uh, we'll put with coin. Quality optimization on or off. Well, I guess we'll keep that on. How do we get out? Okay. Bookkeeping, save settings, okay, save settings and reboot and factory settings and reboot. And um, we've got the IO test up at the top. Take a look at that. Ah, it's just a button test here. And yes, all my buttons are working. That is nice to see. A and start to return. All right. Oops. Okay. So let's get into the actual emulation of this machine and see how good it is. All right. Well, it's on um, 1940 selection here. So let's pick 19. XX, insert a coin, and choose a game. All right. Now, before I said that the volume switch on the back can be uh, used to control the actual volume in here, that is true. But I also said once you connect the HDMI, it will cut off the internal speaker. That is not true because it didn't. So you have to do, you do have to uh, turn down the volume on the back of the machine to turn off the internal speaker. Okay. So at the moment, I've got the sound coming through the stereo system. Now looking at the on-screen image, it does seem to be uh, as if there's some sort of anti-aliasing going on, or not anti-aliasing, some sort of a filter, you know, um, to smooth out, smooth out the graphics. Now, I don't really like that. So hopefully uh, there will be a way of switching that off in the configuration menus on the SD card, I hope. But uh, yeah, it's running this game just fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is try games which are a little bit more demanding. So uh, let's get out of here. Now, how do we get out? So I thought it was start and select. Yeah, it was. Start and insert coin. Okay, let's find some games which are actually demanding. Okay, here we go. Let's go with a bit of Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. 
So this is a CPS2 game. Not very demanding, but uh, yeah, let's see if it runs. Now, as you can see, it's in widescreen, but that's because the native res resolution of a CPS board is actually uh, pretty close to widescreen. Oh, it's got a nasty smoothing image on that, hasn't it? That looks horrible. Let's just see if that optimization option can switch that off. Maybe that's what it was all about. Okay, so we switched off that option that's meant to improve the games. Um, yeah, the image still looks a bit blurry. I think it looks a bit better though. Yeah, it does look a bit better. All right, let's uh, hang on. Well, I've got a kick down there. A kick, kick. All right, the buttons need to be um, sorted out for this game. <laughs> a little bit messed up, but well, that's no problem. You can configure that and just save the options. All right, let's kick some ass. That's weird, the buttons arrangements all messed up. All right, special move. No, nope. ain't, ain't doing it. <laughs> now nah, that was embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting to it now. Alright, so it seems to be working this game pretty well. Let's check out another game. What I want to do is uh, try a Konami game, because the Konami games are usually uh, pretty dodgy for working perfectly well. Ah, uh, before I do that, let's check out uh, Midnight Resistance. Because that should have a rotary controller and um, be interested to see how they've uh, mapped it. And Midnight, Resistance, Midnight Resistance is on here twice for some reason. Alright. Let's see how they've uh, made that work with the regular controller. Another one that's stretched out proportion. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the settings on the TV and fix this because I hate having my game stretched a bit. There you go. Much better. Oh, okay. So what they've done, they've given us two buttons which can rotate the gun in various uh, different directions. Well, that works. Oops. <laughs> Where's jump button? There it is. Okay, so I'll be interested to see what the other Midnight Resistance is like. Maybe that has an alternative control scheme. Let's take a look. does have an alternative to control scheme. Same idea, but the buttons are uh, just changed around. You see there's a bit of screen tearing going on there. Can you see that? Okay, let's try with a Konami game. Something like The Simpsons or X-Men. Now you may be wondering why the games haven't got intros. Well, they do have intros. It's just that they're, uh, they're being skipped because I've inserted the credit. Okay, now normally this game, you got all crackles and stuttering on the intro, but it seems to be quite smooth.
Yeah, no problems. Okay, I wonder if Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is on here. Because that one's a little bit demanding to emulate. Let's check it out, see if it is. Oh, I wanted to do the intro, but got too many credits in it. Okay, well, so far so good. Where's my punch button? Run, jump, there it is. Man, I really do have to configure these controls. <laughs> Talking of which, the controls do seem fairly good. And these are standard size switches and joysticks, so you can swap them out, for, you know, for Sanwa or semi two parts if you wish. Okay. Now let's give this machine something really difficult to do. Let's ask it to play some 3D games. Because I saw Tekken in this menu. There it is. Tekken. But no, Tekken's a bit too easy. Let's go for Tekken 3. Can it play it? All right, now this isn't actually the arcade version. This is the PlayStation version. Oh, you bastard. I <laughs> didn't want to pick Eddie. Okay, anyway, yeah, this is the PlayStation version, so this thing does have a PlayStation emulator built in. And I can prove it's the PlayStation version because when you pause it, there's the uh, PlayStation menu, see? And there's all the options. So yeah, it is the PlayStation version, not the arcade. But how does it run? Is it going to be smooth? Or is it going to be a jerky mess? Round one. Fight. Now I can't play Tekken to save my life. I'm useless at it. But I think that this is running at 60 frames per second. It seems to be... Um, yeah, running perfectly fine. And this video is in 60 frames per second, so if you wanna uh, waste your time and count the frames, <laughs> then be my guest. Now, before I was complaining about the buttons being all messed up, well, that's because they are set to Neo Geo configuration as standard. Um, I've actually reconfigured this now. So as you can see, over to the, oh, it's gonna mess. It's gonna mess them back up again, hasn't it? Oh no! Here we go. So that's the default key map. Um, as you can see, it goes A B C D. That's a Neo Geo style with E and F at the bottom. But I've uh, reconfigured it to A B C at the bottom and D E F at the top. Now the reason I've done that is because it's more in line with the Capcom settings and standard arcade settings. So now this is always going to be A and B. So on a shooter, that's going to be fire, and that's going to be bomb as it should be or on a platform that's going to be jump and that's going to be attack so uh let's just test that out on any game also in that uh, menu system which i haven't shown you you can actually uh change the uh parameters of games so you can make them easier give yourself extra lives things like that wow fang Wow, what the hell is that? Never seen that before. Oh, 
Undercover Cops, one of my favorites. Let's give that a try. Oh, I'll tell you what they have on here. They must have a um, Ninja Baseball Batman on here. Let's have a look. If they have, we've got to uh, load that up. That's a classic. Now you will be happy to know that you can actually remove games from the list and hide games. So you don't have to run, you know, go through all of them like I'm doing now. You can edit it to have just your favorite game showing, things like that. Ninja Baseball Batman. Night Slash is on. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. So if I've got this right, the A button should now be attack and B should be jump with C being a special if the game has a special. Or if you're playing a fighting game, you should have punches at the top, kicks at the bottom. Unless it's a Neo Geo, then it's gonna be messed up, so you'll have to reconfigure the game, the buttons again. Okay, this is emulated pretty well, because normally this game here on the text, it's all messed up. Yep, yeah, that's attack, and that's jump, as it should be. Again, you can see that screen tearing. Did you see that? Okay, what I want to see is um, Nightmare in the Dark. Now, no, not Nightmare in the Dark, Night Slashes. Because this game never emulates properly either. Uh, you know, these kind of uh, Chinese made devices. So let's see how it fares on this. Now, normally when the car drives in, it's kind of semi transparent and it looks a bit weird. So uh, we'll see if it works properly. Okay, here comes the truck. No, it's not. Ah, the wall semi transparent, yeah. So, that's still got an emulation bug in it. Oh, yeah, it's working fine, apart from the screen tearing. Okay, let's take a look at one more game. See, this doesn't look as smoothed out as uh, some of the other games. So, what I'm imagining is that this device is using different emulators for different types of arcade ROMs. It just happens to be that the one it uses for Capcom games has a horrible, nasty, smoothing image filter on it. Because this uh, game certainly does not have that on. And neither did Tekken come to think of it. And um, neither did the Konami games. So yeah, it just seems to affect the CPS games. Okay, so there we have it. That is the most recent version of these arcade systems built into joysticks. What do I think of it? Well, the actual stick itself, I think is really good. It's well built. It's, uh, you know, it weighs a lot, so it's not gonna slide around anywhere. Um, the construction of it is pretty good. And as I said, you can change these buttons to, you know, sandwich buttons or semi to buttons or whatever type of buttons you like. You can uh, change these out because they're all standard size. But the ones built into it are not that bad, actually. They're reasonably good. Um, the actual emulation on the games, though, um, yeah, that is not really up to my standard. I mean, I've got an emulation PC just down there which blows this away. 
I mean, that can run Marvel 3 games, no problem. Um, yeah, so, um, I mean, if you're not really bothered by the um, screen tearing and you don't mind, uh, you know, those filters on some of the games, then, yeah, knock yourself out. Go for one of these devices. Um, but if those type of things do bother you, then maybe these devices are not for you. Or maybe they are because... You could replace the insides for the Pi 4, you know, Raspberry Pi 4. Or if you really, really want to, you can put a Mr. Project in there. Um, but I think a Raspberry Pi 4 might be a better option, um, especially for arcade emulation. And um, yeah, so you get yourself a really good, you know, base stick, um, a good uh, platform to mod as well. Plus you'll be able to get some really high quality emulation going, you know, probably better than what we're seeing built in with the you know with the built-in hardware anyway uh, maybe they can be modded as well I mean the hardware is you know reasonable so you know it could be modded and um, you never know it could be improved a lot over you know stock uh, firmware these things normally can be anyway I'm gonna put a link in the video description down below for this uh, device they come in various styles. This is the Sky King of Fighters style, but you can get them that look like Astro City cabinets and all sorts of things. So there's quite a lot of uh, variety in these uh, sticks. So anyway, until next time, keep on gaming and take it easy.